Hey guys, George at Soundtracks here. This week we're gonna get back to our Operations 101 series. And today we're just gonna talk about startup operation uh, when it comes to starting up your locomotives and running your trains. So let's get started. Now one of the things when it comes back to operations is we have to start our locomotives. Now, in many cases, when we put the locomotive on the track, you'll hear the locomotive start up. As you can hear our steam locomotive right now, and then when I remove this piece of paper out from under the wheels on this PA, you'll hear the diesel engine starting up right away. Now, one of the reasons for that is because we have to start the locomotive. Now, we come back to the diesels here in just a moment, but first we wanna talk about steam. Now steam takes hours and hours and hours to be able to fire up because you have to heat the water that's in the boiler. Now a lot of times in a steam shop, for example, they'll have house steam that they can supplement, but they still have to get the fire hot to be able to get the water in there so that that way it gets hot. So that's why on our steam locomotives, they start up right away, they power, you're hearing the air compressor, you're hearing the blower running, and the occasional uh, random sound as it goes because the locomotive is actually taking hours to get started. And so therefore it's not something they turn a switch or throw a key and it suddenly fires up. So there's not really a startup sequence for a steam locomotive. But in the case of diesels, diesels can sit for days and then turn up basically with a throw of a switch, kind of like your car where you turn a key and it triggers the switch to start the engine. And that's what we're simulating here. So in our diesel locomotive, again, I'm gonna take away my track power or I'm gonna reapply my track power now you're hearing that low pressure alarm bell. It's basically saying, hey, there's no oil pressure. And then it turns off as the diesel engine starts to crank up and fire up. Now this is done automatically on our diesels. The reason it's done that way is so that that way, when you open up your decoder and you install your decoder, you put it on the track, you get that nice warm fuzzy feeling knowing that your decoder is working just fine as it powers up when as soon as track power is applied. And the good news is this is adjustable. Now when it comes to operations, and again, I'm gonna take power away for a moment. Now when it comes to the operations, you may want to start up your diesel engines one at a time, more prototypically like they do in the real world. Or you may decide that with all these diesel engines fired up in a shop or something like that, the noise can get unbearable, especially if you have all of them cranked up to full volume. That noise can become pretty overwhelming in a short amount of time. So you can actually trigger the auto start in CV114 on the diesel locomotive. And so basically CV114 does several things, including setting the notch rate for the auto notching for the diesel engine to notch up per number of speed steps. There's also what's called an interlock bit and the interlock bit prevents you from accidentally manually shutting your diesel engine off while you're moving or vice versa where it won't let you actually run the locomotive until you start the diesel engine. So it's kind of an interlock to make sure that your locomotive performs more prototypically. Now it also has the auto start as we've discussed and then CB114 also affects how the prime mover responds to the dynamic brake application. And in some cases it'll drop to idle, other cases it'll notch up to notch eight, and in some it'll adjust itself to four, and so you may wanna check with your prototype to find out which one you have. But today we're just gonna talk about the auto start. So on this particular locomotive, the default value of CB114 is actually set to 39, which represents seven for every seven speed steps, plus 32, and that 32 value is our auto start. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna reprogram CB114. But to do that first, I have to remove my paper that's keeping power applied or unapplied. Now I'm gonna set CB114. I'm gonna set it to a value of seven so that it defaults to seven speed steps, but then everything else is turned off, including the auto start. So now when I tip my locomotive over and you hear the engine stop, now when I reapply track power, my locomotive is quiet. And the reason for that is because we've disabled the auto start. So now the auto start can be triggered by one of two ways. We can either give it a non-zero motor command. For example, we can just simply speed step one and back down and you'll hear that alarm bell kick on and then the prime mover will start up.
Now the other way of doing that is using the F5, which is our RPM Plus, and that allows you to manually override the diesel engine RPMs. So you can make this engine sound like it's working harder or in a higher notch than say the dynamic exhaust or your auto notching actually does. So when I trigger F5 on, you can actually hear the prime mover now again starting up. Now this is a feature that's in all of our diesel decoders, whether it's an Econami, a Tsunami 2, or a Blue Nami. Now both of these locomotives in front of me are Blue Nami, but you'll notice I'm using the DCC system to control them. That's because we're not connected to any of the apps that were actually running it, so it's still a DCC based decoder. But this feature can be found in any of our decoders, and so therefore you can actually run them and decide how to set up your locomotives based on your own personal preferences, and also how much operation you want to do. Now one of the last things I wanted to talk about with Auto Start is that typically if you have a consist of locomotives, let's say this is the lead unit here, now the first job out that has to actually start the diesel engines and so therefore the locomotives would actually start each individually, that there's not actually a switch in the lead unit that would trigger all three of them to start up together in unison, the engineers would have to go in and enter into the cabinet or into the long hood here, find the start switch, turn it on, get it started. Then they would walk over to the second unit, find the switch, trigger it, turn it on, and get it started. And then they would get up to the third unit, find the switch, trigger it, turn it on, get it started. Then they would get into the cab and do all their MU stuff and, and assign them all together. So this is one of the ways that you could do this prototypically. So even with a consist like this, we can trigger one locomotive at a time to start up. And then you can work your way through and then once you're done, then you can select your consist and run them together more prototypically. Now the last thing I'll mention is when I talk about F5 being the RPM Plus, uh, this is the default for our aftermarket decoders and so if you're purchasing the Athern factory installed decoders, the uh, RPM Plus has actually been moved to function 26 and they've used 5 for some of the lighting effects. Now you can move these around as you see fit, this is just how Athern has them defaulted out of the package. So guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us at support at soundtracks.com and either Norman or myself will be happy to help answer any questions you have regarding operations. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.